Hi everyone, welcome to Bella Entrepreneurs. This is the platform where we highlight and elevate the Latina entrepreneurial voice. I'm super excited to have Yosaima Escobar from Maima's Market here with us today. My name is Rocio Flores and I am the founder of Bella Entrepreneurs. Uh, thank you again for being here. We know that this is going to be a very exciting time to learn about Yosaima and her story. So welcome, Yosaima. A round of applause for you. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's so good to see you. It's so good to have this conversation with you. So we want to just get to know your story, learn a little bit more about you and your journey. And so we're just going to dive right into the questions, if that's okay with you. It's so. Good. Want to want you to tell us a little bit more, a little bit about you, who's your Saima, and mm -hmm. what is Maima's Market? So I'm always curious about kind of like how the name, how you created, where did the name come from? What is it that you do? So tell us a little bit about your business and also about you and who you are. Okay. Um, yeah. So my name is Yosaima and part of of Maima's market. The Maima comes from Yosaima when I was a baby. I couldn't pronounce my own name. So I would say Maima and that just caught on as my nickname. And part of the reason why I kept the name with Maima's market is because this is a space for me that I've created um, within my own spiritual journey as a place where my inner child can just shine and like run around and create things and um yes yeah, so that's a little bit about the name and going back to the spiritual journey i think that mama's market symbolizes like part of my own journey and figuring out how to really bet on myself and like commit to this thing that i said that i was gonna do because there's a very like powerful part and a soulful part of me that wants to do these things that, and I see like thinking back to the way I grew up and stuff, it, this became a natural thing where it started off as me making little bracelets. Mm -hmm. And originally I would make bracelets with tiny beads and then just the elastic string, you tie it and then it's like, it's good to go. And I try to use um, beads that were like real stones, like authentic Jasper and authentic. I think my first one, my first favorite was amethyst because I learned that there were a lot of healing properties to amethyst. Um, and so I started wearing that. And slowly, I think, well, not slowly, very abruptly, actually, 2020 happened. Mm -hmm. And for me, like, and for the world, it was such a turbulent time where all of us were trying to figure out, like, what are, what are we even doing? I unfortunately lost my job. I was working at a nonprofit. And yeah, like our whole model didn't work with the new guidelines of the way we had to um, behave around each other. And just financially, it didn't make it after the fact. Um, and so... Uh, I was kind of, I just had this, uh, I learned to understand that it was an opportunity, but at first I just like had this big problem of things that I had to figure out. And, but I learned um, with some time that it was actually an opportunity to start over. It was the opportunity that I was waiting for where I can just do things differently and have a fresh start, honestly. And for me, and so, yeah, for me, I had to think about like, what do I want to do then? Like I have all these things and um, just as I could have never imagined that all of this would happen, I tried to keep the attitude of the future will be something I can't imagine, but it could be in a very positive way. Like if I use this time, productively but also in a way that is healing because this was also a point for me to heal like I had that time to relax and sit back and really reflect on what I wanted and that was leading me to my Ms. market I wanted something to call my own something that was for me to have fun in um, and for me to connect with people um, my job I worked with um, kids and it was a career program 
and they were in seventh grade. So it's like a very angsty time for them. They're trying to figure out what to do. And so that whole time I was helping them figure out what they wanted to do. And like, they were 12 and so aspirational. And like, they had this much, like sometimes they'd be so shy and it'd be, what do you like to do? And they don't know, but they know like this one very specific thing that they like, and we just like go with it and we run with it. And so, I kind of had to carry that own that same energy, but for myself. And um, because I'm still so young, like I'm 24, like I like, duh, like this is a time where I figure things out and it's like puberty part two, like it's just <laughs> as angsty, like before it was like child to like adults, but now I feel like spiritually and in all the other ways, like I'm, com- I'm becoming a woman now. And, um, and that's a big part of being a Latina entrepreneur is just like balancing what it is to be a woman in the society. It's just so much, but to carry myself as one is the goal. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just been trying to stick to that and continuing to be inspired by like my students and how they were just so Mm open-minded. And so that's, how I knew like that's what I needed to be I need to be open-minded and confident and so yeah that's how my mass market happened that's amazing and I you know it's not easy to kind of take have that courage it doesn't just kind of happen overnight either sometimes we we need to build up to, to that our experiences like you said your experiences even with the students that you worked with all kind of helped shape and get you where you are. And I think that, you know, the way you described it and you illustrate it beautifully in in terms of what you experienced and what brought you to where you are today. And so thank you for sharing that so much. Let's take a step back um, because we know that part of your, your drive and your ethic also is, as we mentioned, is shaped over the course of your life. You know, it's not something that you kind of just wake up to and you're like, this is who I am, but life kind of, kind of builds us up. And so share with us a little bit about um, your childhood and what that journey was like for you kind of growing up and what what were some of your experiences there. And, and if you know, if you had entrepreneurs in your family, you know, I don't know mm-hmm. if that was it, or if this was something very different for you, or just tell us a little bit about your childhood journey. Yeah, my childhood was fun. Um, I adopted the nickname in first grade bossy gallito because it was after (laughs) a story we read in class and i guess that was bossy and my friends called me out so they're like you're the bossy gallito i remember telling my mom this and then like that's just been like around me i'm your sign of the bossy gallito but like i've learned to just embrace that like you know i'm bossy but i see it as like sometimes i'm in a room and like even as a kid, like I remember feeling like I'm in a room and everybody's kind of confused and I just intuitively know what to do. So I'm like, let's, why don't we do this? Like, come on, let's do that. But at the same time, I was like extremely shy. Mm. So I would be the student where like in teacher conferences, they'd be like, yes, Arma, she's so smart. Like she does all these things, but I see you and like, you don't want to raise your hand. And I'm like, Ooh, like yeah, I don't want to raise my hand. And I think um, that just carried on. And that's still something I struggle with where like I can be extroverted and like have like this energy, but at the same time, like if I'm insecure or something, like I don't, I, I hesitate. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's another like challenge of mine. Like nowadays we call that imp- imposter syndrome. Um, so that's still like part of being that bossy guy. Um, but at the same time, like I was surrounded by strong women in my family. My mom, she's a preschool teacher and she has always had like all of these uh, materials around because they do a lot of crafts in school. So I always had that at hand and like, this is my painting. Like I like to paint. Um, she would use me as like a guinea pig for activities so that was always fun and so when I had my first like bracelet making phase in middle school she got me like the big set of beads where I have every color that I wanted Um, and so that artistic side was always like available to me and that's something I really appreciate and um, 
now like fast forward to 2020 like I've learned more about my grandma um I learned that she was actually her own business owner like back in the day she had her own jewelry business which I didn't know but was simultaneously like I was learning as I was developing this idea of I must market and yeah and she would tell me stories about like how she made strong strategic um, decisions to like price things one way and like um, market them another and like her her own like success stories like her stories of conquest of like yeah like back in my day I was boss I had these things and like I hustled and that was something that I was getting really inspired by as I was building and so I say that because my grandma, unfortunately, I lost her this um, she's the matriarch of our family and we lost her because of COVID earlier this year in January. Um, but because of that, I just feel like I've accepted so much of her love and I've been thinking about the just her own wisdom that she shared with me and one thing she was always adamant about was having your own financial independence. Mm. like you like just because you're a girl like does it mean you should be depending on your husband she was very progressive like she told us we don't you don't even have to have kids like why do you want them and I remember I struggled to even answer that question and she's like you see like you don't need to have them and she was yeah she was very progressive but she was always like okay like next thing like you need to get your license and like you need to know how to take care of yourself when you're sick so I was always instilled to like be self-sufficient. And that's another thing that was layered on top of me being the eldest daughter in my own immigrant family, where like I'm also the guinea pig of processing what my parents and their parents had envisioned as the American dream. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that, was on me, but I've always had that drive. So I was always involved in extracurriculars, um, taking advantage of all these like outreach programs. Um, by third grade, I was thinking about college and like where I want to go and what I want to be. And in high school, I was um, an ASB. So I would do a lot of the fundraisers and my friends and I, we'd make it like a fun thing that us girls were doing and leading the team and like earning enough money for prom and the dances and the visions that we wanted. And so all of that combined, it just brought like, I can do this. Like I have this experience, like I love talking to people, um, but now I'm just gonna do this for myself. And yeah, like when my grandma passed away, I was a mess for a while, for a long time. And until I realized like, you're never really done mourning. Mm -hmm. Like it's still always gonna hurt. And yeah, like this is the first time I mourned. And once I learned that, I just like, just like took in all of the love that she had for me and knew that if I do this and I do this for myself, like my grandma would be really proud of me. Mm -hmm. And that that's like, yes, like those, that's part of me planting the seeds of my market. So I'm like, I'm excited for this. That's beautiful. I think definitely our family, those that are here with us and those that aren't definitely provide that strength and that purpose for us and so much of what we do and in, in all aspects of life. And definitely when you're embarking in this, this business journey and seeing just how strong she was, I could see it just kind mm -hmm. of resonate and I can see it just illuminate from you when you're talking about her. So she's definitely here with us. She's definitely supporting you and rooting for you all the way. And knowing that that drives your purpose is I know that so many can relate to that in their personal experiences for those that might be out there listening to this interview and either thinking mm -hmm. about starting their business or, or already kind of in the midst of it. Um, just holding our and honoring our loved ones is really important. So thank you so mm -hmm. much for sharing that very personal story with us. Mm -hmm. um, so you talked a lot about kind of your inspiration for the market, um, including the, the story you shared uh, with your the experience with your grandmother. 
um, when we look at like, how did you actually get started with the market? So, you know, do you remember kind of what that felt like for you and what you had to do to really kind of get started to, to get your market up and running? Tell us, tell us a little bit about that experience. Um, yeah, I think that would be still part of that 2020 experience. Mm -hmm. um like as I was healing I had to fight through a lot of self-doubt like mm -hmm. a ridiculous amount where I wish I could have just done with that like faster because it's so so silly sometimes like I think to myself like would Jeff Bezos doubt himself this much like no like would Elon Musk doubt himself no and not that I aspire to be them like but they just represent like so much of the violence that happens in our society, but here they are making like business decisions, whereas I'm just trying to make something that is very thoughtful and uh, helps my community and there is a community of it. And so I wish that sometimes I would just believe in myself a little sooner so that I can really contribute to like this vision and like what you're trying to build as well and have a platform and share that amongst us and have this like flow of resources among our own bubble like that's a big part was the self-doubt um and another thing of just like I had a soft opening in November so Mima's market dates back to November 2020 and I had a really successful month, like it was going really, really well. Um, and I had a lot of great feedback. And that was like, yay, like, you know, that dispelled any kind of doubt that I did have. Um, but then, then my grandma passed away. And so uh, that became a negotiation of just like healing myself and also learning to accept that like healing is enough for Mima's market and as I heal like I can really focus on Mima's market afterwards um so that was a lot and a big a huge lesson on just like mental health in general of what it takes to run a business like I I am everybody I'm like the whole staff picture and so I'm responsible for all these things and Mima's market is like such a creative outlet for me. And so when I'm struggling with my mental health like that, that the spark is gone and getting that spark back is harder than I thought. So a lot of that, it, I considered like priority number one for Mima's market, like as the business owner, I need to take care of myself before I can even like, give anybody anything and something that's made with intention because that's a big part of when I make my jewelry is the intention that I have behind it and like make sure that when I'm making it I have like good vibes only great energy and so for me yeah like fighting that self-doubt and you know not letting that spiral my own mental health has been one of the big challenges to overcome and this time really commit to my month market. Mm -hmm. And when I reopened um, in April, like that whole time was me like really committing and learning what it meant. And that was to just really give it my all and like give it my soul because if I'm mentally well, then I can and I can do that easily. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like getting to here, I had to overcome that. Yeah, and I think you you bring up such an important point and it's not addressed enough kind of in our day to day or in kind of you see in, in even like business programs or conversations that are happening. You know, we don't talk about that piece and the mental health and the wellness. And and you're right, I, I personally feel that that's key. You know, the, I always kind of share with people, you know, you're who's who's behind the business is a human is a human being. Yeah. You know? we're not robots so we don't operate on you know algorithms or by like some fuse box <laughs> right for human mm -hmm. beings and human beings are complex beings there's a lot that happens in our life and that affects us and impacts us in different ways and mm -hmm. it should you know because that's that's human nature and so i think that opening up about your 
struggle, but also your successes and just having that network around you where you can share because you're not alone. I've heard so many women on this platform and others that share about kind of the behind the scenes, like we say, right? And there's a lot that goes on. And so I think, again, folks that are listening, I'm sure there's so many that that connect with what you just shared. And so thank you for bringing that, lifting that up and bringing that to the forefront of this conversation. So in terms of your, um, your business purpose and mission, I know you talked a lot about your, your story to get to Mima's market and, and opening and your inspiration. But if you were to kind of sum up and, and I were to ask you, you know, what is the mission of your business? Like if you can kind of tell us that in three sentences or, you know, I don't want to limit you, but, you know, if you could give us a, a succinct answer in terms of what is the purpose and mission, what would you what would you tell us? Um, the purpose? Well, I have a slogan and that is adorn your beauty. And that is the purpose of Mima's Market. I like to create things where I want the people who are wearing them to really feel beautiful and adorn like your body because like as I'm getting older and part of womanhood like I'm learning what it's like to be with my body and like what that evolution has been so for me I yeah my miss market is dedicated to making people feel beautiful when you wear the jewelry and really just embracing and adorning like what you have and knowing that that's enough. Mm, that's beautiful. I love that. So um, what what struggles would you say? I know you talked a little bit about um, some of the challenges that you in, encountered, um, but in terms of, you know, anything else that you can share about a particular challenge that you've had in your business and how you overcame that challenge um, that you want to and that you can share with us? Um, beyond maybe what you already shared. I know there was a lot that you um, shared with us already, but um, anything else in terms of a challenge that has come up? Or it could have been something in the beginning or something more recently. Mm -hmm. um, I think a challenge for me is just the money management side. Like that I know has to be an art and it has to become like perfectly perfect for my market. And that's not something I have the strongest background in. Um, and that's so essential to running a business is having that knowledge of like how to complete a balance sheet and like knowing what it means to keep track of everything and the resources that are even out there was a steep learning curve for me and um, what helped was just like going on YouTube and learning from other people um, you'd be surprised by how niche some of this help is like I found a YouTuber who specializes in helping creators who have handmade business businesses in like jewelry. So I'm like, wow, that's literally perfect. Um, I think um, what helped too was, you know, just also just learning how to ask for help um, and learning where to ask for help. Like that's a struggle, but it's, it's worth pushing through that so that when I do run my business, like I know I'm not running it into the ground. Like I know that everything is aligned and um, yeah, feeling confident about that just brings a lot of peace of mind too. Yeah, definitely. I know the, the finance piece. <clears throat> and like you said before, right? The wearing many hats. I think when you're um, an entrepreneur or starting out or early on in your business, you do experience everything uh, all at once. You're the kind of one kind of managing. And as you're growing your business, you might add to your team. But I do think that that adds a level of determination and empathy mm -hmm. and grit, like we were talking about before offline, on yeah. camera, um, to kind of help you be that person who can kind of have the confidence, as you're saying, and just continue and have that persistence and that perseverance. Um, is there any mm -hmm. any tips or advice you would give to other Latina entrepreneurs as they're kind of rising in their business and and looking for some answers or looking for some encouragement? What are your words of wisdom to share with them? Um, I think my advice would be to just just take the leap, like jump and see what happens and you'll be really, really surprised, but you'll be really happy that you did it because change does take courage. 
Um, but you have to get over that fear of change because human nature, we don't even like change. So it really takes courage and boldness to just go for it and really bet on yourself and like know your worth. So, but yeah, all of that comes after you jump. So first you have to jump and go for it. That's great. Thank you, Yosaima. So we're getting down to kind of closing our time together for the interview. So just wanted to give you the opportunity to share anything else that maybe we we didn't get to talk about or anything that you want to share with those that are listening before we close the interview? Um, I guess I would like to share that if you are feeling doubtful and like, you know, I wish I could take this my own advice, but like if you're feeling doubtful, just know that it's it's only for a little while and you can get through it. Um, but also just know that life is short. So like, why not do the thing now? And um, whatever that means for everybody else, like you, I think deep down, we all know our purpose and it can be an outlet that will bring you a lot of success and abundance. So it's worth, it's worth taking the trip to figure out who you are and what you like and moving forward with courage. Thank you so much, Osaima. You definitely are an inspiration to me. I know that um, those that can have the opportunity to view this and listen in will totally agree your resiliency, your courage, and sometimes we can't see it within ourselves, but I see it just kind of shining out of you as your determination, your passion, and just your purpose-driven business is really inspirational. I wish you all the best of luck. I'm going to continue to follow your story and I encourage everyone out there to also continue to support Yosaima, to follow her and Maima's Market on Instagram. And so we'll have that here on the website once you're viewing this. And to all of you out there, please continue to support our Latina entrepreneurs. Continue to connect with us at Bella Entrepreneurs and remember to shop and support Latina business. Yosema, thank you so much. And everybody, thank you for joining us. We'll see you. Thank you all. Thank you.